Today we're going to be talking about an Alux. Oh, nope, not AEG Electrolux. No, no, not Viking Electrolux. Do you mean like United States Electrolux? Well, kinda, not really. Oh, you must mean Arius. Well, no, not really. Well, I mean a Royal Lux that's distributed through Arius? With the nozzles and the attachments made by an unnamed Chinese manufacturer? Yes, that's exactly what we're talking about today. Bear with the dry humor, folks. Thanks for tuning in to Performance Reviews, where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And you can see what we have today. Now, if you have a door-to-door -door salesman in your home right now, uh, tell them to GTFO. Uh, spoiler alert. Why as cool and quirky as this machine is, this is not something that is any better than any of the vacuums you're going to find at your local vacuum store. Hell, you might even find one of these at your local vacuum store. So this is the sort of thing where, why does it exist? How does it exist? Who is Arius? So Arius was Electrolux, but AEG took their name back. AEG Electrolux kind of fizzed out of the United States. They're no longer in the United States. Royal Lux doesn't do business in the United States. So this is a gray market import. And what's different for the US market are the attachments. So I guess we'll start with the attachments real quick. Uh, and again, if you have a door-to-door -door salesman in your house, again, tell them to leave. There's no reason to buy this from them. Uh, but let's start with the attachments. Well, this is the dusting brush slash upholstery tool. This is a dusting brush slash upholstery tool from a 1960s Electrolux. And as you can see, they are the same. It's not a bad tool. Again, more the same. And it comes with this little inch and a quarter adapter so that you can use it. So despite them using this funky size, they actually give you the adapter, which I really like. That means you can go ahead and ditch any of the accessories you don't like and just use standard accessories. And I think they did that because they knew their accessories were bad. Um, we'll talk about the brush. I'll roll on a clip of the hard floor brush. The wands, and I think this is really the crux of all the Electroluxes since the Renaissance that came out in 1995, is they went to these plastic two-piece wands and yeah, that, that's the sound it makes when you're using it. It doesn't feel premium. Even though the nozzles of high quality and actually the canister body is of pretty good quality too, these wands and this hose handle, uh, they detract from the experience. And I found that this hose was just too short. And I'll show you what I mean. By the time we put the hose on, it is like stretched all the way. And that's how it feels when you're using this, is that this hose is just like about a foot too short. And I really wish they would make this just a little bit uh, longer. Also, if you look at the canister body, the hose comes straight out where everybody else has gone to a better design. I'm gonna do my best to explain this. You feel this more in person than anything, is when you go to pull the canister, you're using like a good foot of your hose just to come up to you. Where on an actual Electrolux, like this, it comes up at an angle. And I'm using this orange Electrolux that's about 10 years older than this other machine in terms of when the design came out, just as an example because this is what everybody else went to, is this kind of slanted upward hose. And you see this with Mila, you see this with Sibo, Bosch. Uh, you, you see this with uh, Philips machines, basically anybody who makes canister. They all went to this. Hell, even TriStar went to this in their designs. The hose is in just a fantastically weird spot. The other thing is this is a long boy. This thing is so long to maneuver. And again, I'm gonna rip on it using an Electrolux. You see the Electrolux is about two thirds the size, but the wheel placement on this is all the way on the end, which means this thing tugs like a barge versus maneuvering. And again, this, yeah, you gotta has to get going and then it will maneuver. This thing, maneuvers worse than the Electrolux I grew up from the 70s. All right, 
I'm just gonna kinda further prove my point. I have the Electrolux that I grew up with. Notice it has that same dusting brush. And you'll notice the wheels on this are more towards the middle, about a foot apart. You notice the wheels on this, these casters just about line up. That extra length means this thing just doesn't maneuver. It does have a nice convenient carrying handle. It does have a parking spot back here. Okay, yeah, you, you, I guess you could carry the wand back there. So this machine has a parking spot for the power head in a very weird place. It seems like an afterthought. Now, you would think with this parking spot on here, there would be a place to park the hard floor tool. There is not. And it is one of the strangest and most annoying quirks to the machine that there is no place to park the hard floor tool. Now let's talk about a few things I like. This has a swivel on the hose, which is nice. The hose comes off. That is just a very nice mechanism. It's got a garage door. So if you want to stow it without the hose, this lifts up. The bag self seals. Again, I like that. The bag is tiny. This bag is really, really small. And again, I just want to compare its bag to a Mila bag and a SIBO bag, two other European offerings, to give you an idea just how small that vacuum bag is. And then inside is a HEPA filter. That's HEPA filter plus a charcoal filter. So that's all before the motor. It's kind of nice. Again, you would think with as big, I'm gonna put that in, and as bulky as this machine was, that it would have at least decent bag capacity. It does not. Now, also on the back side of this, there's a compartment, and we have the exhaust filter, which is quite spent on mine. And good luck trying to find this thing online. For the review, I tried to find a new one. I could not find a new one any which where. Nope, not all. So good luck finding that. I guess the other thing I want to notice uh, or mention, it exhausts out both sides. And uh, there's a little tab in here for you to put some smell good stuff uh, if that's the sort of thing you're into. And while we're at it, here is the size of this machine compared to something like a Mila or an Electrolux. And keep in mind, both of these have larger vacuum bags and cord rewinds that are the same length as this machine. All right, let's talk about the controls. So the first thing I notice is the buttons extend all the way down here. And that means you can set this up and accidentally turn it on or off. So that's something quite interesting. Now the other thing, is like every other Electrolux, this will not start without the bag properly in place. <laughs> okay, so it will not start without the bags, the filter in place. Has a few things here. Has a suction control. So you go plus minus with the suction control and as you can see, when you step it up, it uh, has two settings for each LED that lights up. There are no hand controls other than a carpet hard floor switch right there for the electric power head. The auto setting, kind of useless. It's more for the European market, but it's there. It will turn the suction up and down accordingly. Again, I just don't think it makes any difference. The thing that I thought was most curious was this machine has to be one of the last machines on the market with a blower port. And the blower port bypasses the filter just simply by doing that. It's got a spring-loaded valve in there and has a nice rubber gasket here. So it's not gonna blow unless you really want it to. The reason we see blower ports disappearing from vacuums, pretty simple. One, leaf blowers are really affordable. Two, the idea of blowing all the dust that's gonna sit in these ridges of this hose around doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There's no real reason for the blower port. Uh, it can't unclog the machine, it just, Again, it's one of those things, you might use it to inflate an air mattress or something, but again, all that other sort of things we would use blowers for have gotten so inexpensive, there's no real reason to have it on a vacuum cleaner. The body has this nice like rubber, 
and then it's got this stainless steel shell, and this, you can kind of really see it right here. That stainless steel is just over the plastic, and the plastics, just like everything else on this, is it's getting brittle, and it feels a little cheap. Honestly, it just feels cheap. The whole machine creaks and rattles and feels cheap. Uh, and this is not an inexpensive machine. Um, in fact, I have the original sales paperwork. I show after trade-in with tax, this was a $1,400 and $3 machine sold 2015 is when this particular one was sold by uh, the Arius of uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. I've actually have been in there. I know exactly where that is. Uh, so I have the original paperwork with this as well. Um, give you an idea. They kind of tell you the area story. Um, they also show some of the other products that they have made with their name on it. And that's the thing is, again, this is made by Lux Royal. Arius basically contracts a company uh, to make this nozzle. And that company does not want to be known, uh, but I think we all know who they are. They go by the name Perfect. Um, they are also the company that helps make a lot of the Bissell Big Green equipment. Um, and the nozzle's fine. You know, it's got a uh, chevron-shaped brush roller. You can see it has some of my wife's hair, so I'd say the hair tingle is a thing. And it has, again, this height adjustment. So the wheels in the back, let's see if we can crap get this on camera, right here, are the height adjustment. So sometimes when you push this, especially like on soft carpet, like I have, you push down, which is counterintuitive, and then with that little bit of pressure, it adjusts kind of the way it should be, but not all the way. And again, this is a very old design. Uh, I think it was the 1980s when they came up with this originally. Uh, so there's nothing inherently wrong with it. It's got an LED. Uh, it's got a long life belt. There's no reason to change the belt in here for the most part. So the nozzle itself, is good, and I guess we can roll in a clip of me fixing one of these uh, that I did last week. If you wanna see what the inside of this nozzle looks like. Uh, you know, everything, you got cartridge bearings in the brush roller. These brush rollers, there are numerous companies who are making these rollers now, so you can get those parts. Again, uh, perfect manufacturing has become kinda of the, from the Chinese knockoff to now actually just making it for them. So you can get all these nozzle parts are widely available, the motor, all that stuff. Um, really the thing that they do special for them is it's got an LED headlight. Again, a 50 cent part from China uh, does not mean this is any better. I think the real weird thing about this though is it's got this parking spot just added on. This vacuum was loaned to us uh, by a friend of the channel and it's not mine, so I'm not going to be able to do it in the shop where we can really deep dive and take this apart, unfortunately. Now, here's one of the things that's really gonna separate it from its European counterparts, is because it's running on 110 volts here in America, the motor is different. So I will show you the working vacuum on that. Now, those numbers are pretty strong. 81 inches of sealed vacuum, 44 inches of working vacuum, and 81, 82 inches of sealed vacuum are pretty good. So let's see if those numbers translate into a pickup test. All right, we're gonna do a pickup test and a sound test. You're gonna hear the real sound of the machine through a studio microphone. You might have noticed my voice has changed tone a little bit. We're gonna have the machine on high. We of course have our usual mess of breakfast cereal, flour, cat litter, and fresh pet hair. Let's see how it does. <laughs> So it seems to have left a little bit of flour behind, um, but everything else looks pretty good. Uh, this doesn't have any sort of CRI rating or anything for fine pickup. And it, you know, I will say, even though the numbers are decent on this machine, 
it's it does the way that this old joint and this design is almost 30 years old the way this is designed it does leak a little bit of air so it makes me wonder uh, just on this machine i don't usually think this with vacuums that it might leak a little air through there they of course have a chevron shaped brush roller and that's very good as well all right let's see if it can redeem itself with its hard floor tool and again studio microphone we have fresh pet hair cat litter flour and breakfast cereal let's see how it does Like most of the pet hair got actually stuck in the bristles. A little bit of flour, and you saw I did just like a quick second pass just to see what would happen. Um, and it snow plowed like breakfast cereal and cat litter. Um, that's not great, and I'm frankly I'm surprised at those results. Now, those of you who are familiar with Electroluxes. I've probably seen this tool. This one's from the 70s, but as far as I know, they started doing this either in the 60s or the 50s. And the tool can be switched over to be used as an area rug tool. Super strange, super old school. However, this one just doesn't feel the metal plastic. Nothing feels quite as nice as this, despite this being not particularly a high quality tool to start with. At least it's not uh, painted gold. And then when you're done, you're supposed to switch it out. All right, let's see how the Lux does on stair cleaning. It does come with this lovely Sidekick 3 attachment. I want to say Sidekick 2, but it's a 3 clicks into place and is electrically driven, which is really nice. So I've got some animal hair and some cat litter. Let's see how it does. So this machine does clean fairly well on stairs. The attachment is good. I will say, despite it having an electric motor, this thing really bogs down on stairs, uh, more so than even like a normal turbo tool. So it's not as strong as like the zero G's powered or even sidekicks of the past. And well, I think the explanation of that is on the back. As far as the cord length goes, it's about 25 feet. It's what you expect in the average cord rewind. I can get down the hall most of the way. I still can't get right to the end of the hallway. Up, you see our other cat has joined us, uh, but it's still a little bit short, but again, definitely not the worst. As far as low places get, that's where this nozzle really does exceed. It's really flat and low profile, and you can see it gets under a bed quite nicely. So my final thoughts on this gray market import. Well, it's really bulky. The tool set is probably the biggest hindrance of this machine and its wheelbase. Its wheelbase is unacceptable for when this machine came out. And I understand the latest version of this is now white where you see blue on here, but it is the same machine, with the same accessories, with the same motor. So I'm not going to give it a recommend. If you saw one of these, you know, for 50 bucks, your local marketplace or at a thrift store, and you needed a vacuum, this would not be the worst option either. And I think it's kind of like a Kirby in that way. It's not bad, but it's definitely far from modern. And that's, that's its biggest downfall. So thanks for watching. Big thank you to Ryan for lending this to the channel for us to film. Give this video a thumbs up. That helps us out a whole lot. If you love what we do, check out the description. We have a Discord server. We have links that benefit the channel. And you can help us on Patreon if you wish to help us financially as well. Have yourself a wonderful day.